A pleasant good morning to each and every one. We greet you in the most precious and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior. That name is Jesus Christ. We want to say a special good morning to the family, the Henry family this morning. We know at this time we are celebrating the life of Brother Calvin Henry. We are not looking at the death, but we are looking to the resurrection. For Jesus tells us, that we do not weep as a people who have no hope this morning, but he have gone to prepare a place this morning. And if it wasn't so, he would have told us. So this morning, he, we are saying bye-bye to daddy, bye-bye to uncle, bye-bye to brother, but not bye-bye for eternity. Amen. Someday, some great day, 
we'll all be caught up, caught up to meet him. And the Bible says, and the dead in Christ will rise first. So he will rise first. Mother, you're coming behind. Amen. And we will have a grand time up in heaven. Amen. I want you to stand with me this morning. As I just lead you in the scripture, Psalms 90, that says, The Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and a watch in the night, so teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. O oh, satisfy us early with mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and the glory unto thy children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yes, the work of our hands shall thou establish this morning. This morning, I just feel like the presence of God is such is in this place. And I just feel like giving God a round of applause this morning. He doesn't need an occasion to be praised this morning. Amen. It could be a funeral. It could be a wedding. We praise God anyhow. I want to invite at this time. I want to invite at this time, Brother Antonio which is one of the sons of Brother Calvin this morning, who's going to open us in a word of prayer. Hallelujah. Good morning to each and everyone. Good morning to the viewers. I'd just like to take this time just to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. I'd like each and everyone to just bow our heads and we pray. Father God, I come before you, Lord, thanking you, O oh God, for this moment, O oh God. We ask, O oh God, that you fill this place with your presence, O oh God. Give us, O oh God, a spirit of peace, O oh God, a spirit of comfort in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you, O oh God, for what you have done, O oh God. And we ask, O oh God, Father Lord, for your protection, O oh God. As we as a body, O oh God, that come to celebrate, O oh God, even the death, O oh God, of my Father, Lord. I ask, O oh God, that you give us strength, O oh God. You give us wisdom, O oh God. God, and we thank you for everything that you will do in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Again, a pleasant good morning to each and every one of you, to all the ministers in the midst, to those of you who are viewing live this morning. We want to say a pleasant good morning to the family, the Henry family, the Silverton family, all the family from Trinidad, those in Tobago, and the Restorers family that are online right now. We want to acknowledge the pastors who are viewing at the same time, showing uh, comfort and showing their care for this family this morning under the International Pentecostal Assembly. We say a pleasant good morning to the entire uh, family and those of you who are viewing this morning. At this time, I want to invite my dear husband, Reverend Dwayne Dyer, as he leads us in a time of worship. We want to celebrate the life of Brother Calvin Henry. I want to say good morning to everyone, those who are on the inside, those who are on the outside viewing from the media. We are here to celebrate, I would call him Uncle Calvin, you know, and he was such a, a humble and quiet and he, he, he never used to show any form of, of worry and, and, and issues, you know, and, and we are here to celebrate him today you know and i want you to join with me as we sing as we celebrate and we we give him a a a, a nice send off this morning amen since i'm serving jesus i have no regret have no regret have no regret since i'm serving jesus 
Jesus, I have no regrets. Jesus, he never failed me yet. Since I'm serving, since I'm serving Jesus, I have no regrets. I'm no, I have no regrets. I have no, I have no regrets. Since I'm serving Jesus, I have no regrets. Jesus, Jesus. I'm serving Jesus. I have no regret. I have no regret. I have no regret. Since I'm serving Jesus, I have no regret. Jesus, He never failed. You deserve the praise. 
your name is worthy. God. 
God. We magnify your name. We thank you there God that you are in the midst of bless. Your word tells us where two and three are gathered. You are in the midst to bless. This morning believers it is not about numbers. 15 is just right. Amen. God will still move because he's not concerned about our numbers he's concerned about what we came here to do today and it's about to celebrate the life of brother calvin henry one of simplicity but one that stood by his family every step of the way amen and we want to say that's a good place to be it's a good testimony to have when your sons and your daughters can be here this morning and say daddy we love you Daddy, we'll miss you. It was good having you. God loaned you for a while. He loaned him for a while to this family. And this morning we are here to say thank you, Lord. You have indeed been good to us. This morning we want to invite uh, Mrs. Candy Doris who will do our scripture reading this morning. And then you may be seated for a short while. So please remain standing as she comes this morning. Pleasant good morning to everyone. My scripture reading is taken from John chapter 14, from verses 1 on to 27. And it reads, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. From henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the father and it sufficeth us. Jesus said unto him, have I been so long time with you and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that had seen me had seen the father. And how sayest thou then, show us the father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe in me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for, for the very works sake. Verily I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If he asks anything in my name, I will do it. And if he love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seared him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also." And that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that had my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judas said unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, 
How is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and he will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace. I leave with you my peace I give unto you not as the world giveth give I unto you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid this is the reading of the Lord thanks be to God this morning you may be seated at this time in the honor and the celebration of the passing of brother calvin henry again to those if you just come came on the live we greet you on behalf of the family this morning in the most precious and wonderful name of our lord and savior let me acknowledge my bishop on the island no other person but our dear father and friend reverend manuel dyer we thank god for his life this morning he's coaching this morning amen and i thank god for him every step of the way this morning we have a tribute that is coming out of the family this morning this one this one will minister to you because she knows the heart of her husband amen amen at this time i want you to help me welcome no other person but the excellency the most honorable woman in this room we call her mother we call her friend we call her sister help me welcome mother minister sister mary henry as she leads in a tribute giving a farewell to her husband hallelujah isn't god wonderful today hallelujah my song is entitled, this is a song that my husband loved to hear me sing. So I'm going to do it for him because when he came to know Christ, it was such an honor and a privilege to know that he came to know Christ before God took him. So I know for a fact that he's going to be with the Lord. But my song is entitled, Soon I Will Be Done, from Mahalia Jackson. Soon it will be done. All the trouble of this world, the trouble of the world, the trouble of this world, soon it will be done. All the trouble of this world, I'm going to be with my love no more suffering. And dying no more suffering and dying no more, no more, no more suffering and dying. 
I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to be with my Lord. So soon it will be done. All the trouble of this world, all of the trouble of the world the trouble the trouble of this world and soon it will be done oh the trouble of this world oh i'm going I'm going, I'm going to be with my Lord. I'm going to meet my mother. All the trouble of this world. I'm going to meet my mother over yonder oh i'm going to meet my mother over yonder i'm going to be to be with my lord so soon it will be done all the trouble of this world all of the trouble of the world all of the trouble the trouble of the world oh yes and soon it will be done oh the trouble of this world oh my husband he is going he's going He's going to be with his God. Oh, yes. So I'm telling you to make ready for when he cometh. I want you to be ready when Jesus comes. I want you to be ready. Put your life in order. I want you to be ready when Jesus comes. Don't take it for granted. He could come anytime. Oh, Lord, be ready for when he comes. Oh, my husband is gone. Oh, yes, he's gone. Oh, yes, he's gone. He's gone. Oh, yes, he's gone. He's gone. He's gone. To be with his love. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. We thank you so much, Mother Mary, Sister Mary, the mother of this house, of the Henry family. We thank God so much for that tribute. We know for sure that if he could see us right now, if he could have only heard us right now, he would have been so touched, so blessed. More so to see his generation right here, 
he would be so happy and so blessed this morning. We thank God that he is indeed a good God. Thank you so much. We pray strength on you, Mother Mary. We know this couldn't be flesh and blood. It had to be the Holy Spirit. At this time, we want to uh, open up one for one person, no other person but a friend of the family, Sister Anna, a friend of the Henry family for years, for a very long time. And uh, she wants to bring greetings this morning and share a word of comfort to the family. Help me welcome her this morning. words but in tongues I just will sing um, one verse of take the name of Jesus with you sister Mary I was pondering what to say but the Holy Spirit gave me this song so I'm doing the lead, going by the leading and the direction of the Holy Spirit this morning hallelujah hallelujah may his soul rest in peace hallelujah father I give you praise I give you thanks hallelujah hallelujah Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrows and of woe. It will comfort and will guide you wherever you may go. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of Joy of heaven, precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Blessing to the Henry family and may God bless you continually, hallelujah. Thank you so much, Sister Anna. Remember the days of Bell Garden, Zion Hill. Amen. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, amen. Amen. At this time, we want to go straight in the reading of the eulogy of the Henry family of the life of our dear brother, Calvin Henry. And I want to invite at this time Mrs. Russell Andrews Henry. This is his daughter-in-law as she comes this morning to lead us and to share with us the memory of Calvin Henry. Put your hands together and receive her this morning. Thank you so much, Pastor. Pleasant good morning to everyone. The peace of God is in this room. Amen. So it's my privilege to do the eulogy in honor of my father-in-law, the father of my husband and brother-in-law, Mario, Romeo, his wife, the entire family, and his grandchildren. Calvin Henry was born on the 15th of July, 1959, and raised in the small town of Faisabad, South Trinidad, Calvin Henry was the last of six children in his family. He attended the Pepper Village Primary School and spent most of his childhood years in this quiet village. At the tender age of 16, destiny began to take its course when he met the outgoing, spontaneous, and beautiful Mary Dunton, who would later become his loving and devoted wife for the next 40 years. Their relationship quickly bloomed and Calvin and Mary were married on September 17, 1982. This marriage produced four children, Anderson, Miriam, Antonio, and Romeo. Together they raised their children in another quiet village, St. Mary's Maruga. They both worked, built, and created the best life that they could for their family under the circumstances at the time. A few years later, the family migrated to, to Tobago, which has certainly became their second home. Calvin worked at many jobs. I guess you can say the man was a jack of all trades. Starting at an early age at an offshore company to working in Canada 
and many years up to his retirement at Magdalena Grand right here in Tobago. Calvin, or Pops as he was more commonly and lovingly known, always believed in hard work. He was a very, very hard worker. His personality was one of a quiet, shy, somber nature. He wasn't loud or outstanding like my mother-in-law, but always a person in the background. Pops was no lima. It was just work, home, church, repeat. He was a strict man. He loved order and neatness. It's only if you've lived with Pops You'll also know how much he liked to lock the doors. We're always arguing. He's always locking every single door in the house. And I think it was his way of making sure the family was always secured. His children will all agree that he was by no means a pushover. They could get away with Mary a little bit, moms a little bit. But Popsy was a no pushover, as they all had their share of licks and the occasional cocktail for mischief and bad behavior. They will also agree that Antonio was the spoiled one, so his stories of discipline aren't many. Pops was definitely a strict daddy, a daddy who disciplined, but he was a daddy who was always there. Quiet, humble, hospitable, and accommodating Pops. Never complained or fuss about anything much. Myself and my sister-in-laws are all convinced that we truly got a father-in-law who welcomed us into his family without hesitation. He always took our sides. We are always right and his sons are always wrong. When grandchildren began to enter the family, no one beamed brighter than Pops. He embraced each one with all the love and pride a grandfather could have. He dreamed of having a play park just for them at his own home. He wanted them to adore their papa, have fun with him, but God knows best. Each of his children had their own time with him in his final days. Even Anderson, which is Mario, remarked that on Father's Day of this year, Pop said to him, I love you, son. He acknowledged the role he was given and the part he was given to play in this life, which is a husband a father, a great provider. Pops was no picky eater. Once his belly was full, he did, however, love a good roast corn, wild meat or bush meat, as we say in Tobago, and a simple pack of salted peanuts. And talking about eating, my mother-in-law or moms, as we would call her, would often hide to eat things that were not in her diet. She had to hide from Pops because Pops always had a close eye on her. There were times when she would have boots of illnesses and had to be rushed to the hospital. Pops would shake his head in the same quiet, non-quarrelsome tone and say, Hmm, Mary to harden. In July of this year, Pops was rushed to the hospital after complaining of feeling unwell. His health suddenly deteriorated quickly and by the end of September, he was no longer the man we all knew him to be. He was very weak and frail, but his family stood by his side. They always did their best to make him comfortable despite the limitations, but one thing for sure, they were always there. Moms takes, moms takes joy in the fact that when she lost her foot, she gained a husband, she always said that, who served to God more than ever. He prayed in his last days, he fasted, Pops never left her side. So much so it was even hard for her to have any visitors at hospital because he was always there. She knows and believes in her heart that Pops have gone back to the one who created him. Because in his last days he made amends, he repented, and he asked for forgiveness for any wrong he may have done in his lifetime. It was in this final year, 2021, that Mom saw his strength his care and his attention and his love more than ever. And for that, we give God praise. Pop's only dream was having his own home for his family. Unfortunately, it did not materialize in his lifetime, but with God, all things are still possible. My sister-in-law and I sat and wrote this eulogy with Pop's in mind. Unfortunately, Clarissa is not here with us today due to, due to travel restrictions. 
but her heart and love is with us even at this time. I thank you all for this time to hear and learn more about the man we know as Calvin. Some know him as father, some know him as brother, and me, myself, know him as pops. And we thank God for his life, his family, his church family at Restorers of the Breach IPA, his pastors, Reverend Dwayne and Prophetess Josan Dyer, for always being a pillar of strength and support to the Henry family. We say thank you. Pops, as they say, your number has been called and you have answered. We accept that you are gone, but you will never be forgotten. From your wife, your children, daughters-in-law, and grandchildren, we love you and may your soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you. Wow, that was powerful, amen? You know, as she read that, what came to mind, I, even if I didn't know Pops, the visual was there. That whole scenery was created that you started to see him eating this roast corn and all these things that he loved and locking these doors. Uh, personality trait I had no idea of. Amen. I could imagine going into a room and who locked this door? Pops again? You know? But we thank God for his life. One thing I looked at that was remarkable is that his wife would have to come to board meeting as a board member. And he would bodily lift her out of that vehicle and bring her to that board meeting. And even though we say, Mom, you could stay home, you know, you could come to board meeting on Zoom, she will say, no, I will be there. And she did not come alone. He came with her, and he would drop her off to that meeting and go all around in Scarborough, make up that time, and then come back for his wife. I don't know about you, but that's a good man. And if God did it in the last of his days, God did an excellent job in Brother Calvin Henry's life. And this is something to celebrate this morning. Sometimes we look for so much big things and to see all the money and all, but little things this morning, they add up to do so much in our lives. He's, he has left legacy behind. And we thank God for his life this morning. At this time, we want to say thank you to the daughter-in-laws for that splendid eulogy reading. And at this time, we want to receive one of his sons to do a tribute uh, in the memory of their dear father. Help me welcome a dear brother of ours, Mr. Anderson Henry, this morning, better known as Moses as brother Mario, as he comes and share with you what God has laid on his heart. Praise the Lord. You know, this year, my father telling, <laughs> telling me that he, he loved me. It meant so much knowing that on Father's Day, he told me that it gave me a strength as a man knowing that his father tell his son and also not that he asks me to forgive him and I said daddy I forgive you long time I love you I always will love you knowing that you wanted so much for us even though sometimes people might look down on us. He still give us our encouragement. You all will go deeper. And my father was 
a quiet man, but when he speak to you, his words were like, I don't think this dictionary can really describe when he speak to you. He speak with the strength of a man. He speak with, uh, with authority. He speak whereby as a man you will get that strength to go on. And I really, really thank God for my father. I really love him. I really, really thank God for him being in my life. And daddy, I will never forget you. Thank you for depositing a lot of encouragement, a lot of, a lot of love in your own way. Daddy, thank you. And I know that one day we will see you again. Thank you. Thank you so much. This morning we have arrived to that time where we want to go into the word of the Lord. A short message for the living, not for the dead. Amen. Brother Calvin Pops, he would have gotten his message already. He would have prepared himself to meet his maker. This morning, to those of you who are on the live, to those of you who are watching, to those of us who are still in the land of the living, the message is for us this morning. And the question that comes to mind, it may be a little off, but that's Pastor Joe. Sometimes I'm a little off. Amen. My sermon is entitled, How Are You Building? It's a question, rather, that one must ask themselves in their mind, in their consciousness. How are you building this morning? I want to take a passage from Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27, that says, from the English Standard Version, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And when the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat in on that house, but did not fail, for because it had been founded on the rock and everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. As I share this word today, I open up this sermon with a question that God has placed in my spirit as I reflect on the death of our dear brother Calvin. I asked myself, Joe, how are you building? When people die, it's the perfect time for self-examination. It's the perfect time to look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, if it was you today in that box, how did you build? Did you build on the rock or did you build on the sand? Hearing the testimonies of his children, we can be assured this morning that Brother Calvin chose to build on the rock. Today, we see so much uncertainty in this world today. Everywhere we look, calamity and trouble is striking. It reminds us of the rain, it reminds us of the winds, and it reminds us of the flood. But today, I want you to zoom in into the profession of God. God is a professional builder this morning. From since the time of creation, he has been building. The Bible tells us in Genesis, he took six days to build. If you want to know the architectural building structure of who God is, you've got to go back to Genesis. He is the best builder in creation. When he says in this word in Matthew 7, 24, they that build on the rock 
I want you to understand he has examined the rock. He's a man, he's a God, he's a spirit that has come down and tested the rock. He understood that the sand could not withhold the balance and the reins of life. But if you build on the rock, the storms will come, the rain will come, the wind will come, the flood will come, the hurricanes will come. But my God, you would be left standing. And that's what I'm asking you today. How are you building? Ensure this morning you are building on the rock. You see, when God made creation somebody, come on somebody, he built it, he tested it. He tested everything in the atmosphere. He tested everything in the filament. He tested everything on the earth. My God, the Bible tells me that he didn't stop with creation. He went to mankind. He looked at the earth and he said, where is man? Oh, I got to build man. You see, we serve a master builder bishop. He never stops building. Even though he's dead, he's still building. He said, I've gone to prepare a place for you. I've gone to build something for you because the building is in Jesus' DNA. The building is God's blueprint in mankind. So he comes and he asks the question this morning, how are you building? Are you building with the great builder? Are you building with his DNA? Are you building with his blueprint? Because if you are building with his blueprint, there cannot be failure. There will be no error in the building code because he has already tested it from start to finish. The word of God tells me he's alpha and he is omega. He is in the beginning and he is in the end. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the end. There is nothing that can come past us this morning that God has not walked through already. He has detailed your life. He has architected your life. He has sculpted your life. He has put it together, Minister Rosa. I want you to understand that when he knocked it up, he put it up to stand and not to fall. The devil is a deceiver this morning. He's come to steal, kill, and destroy. But God said, I've come to build. I've come to build. I've come to give you life and give you it more abundantly. You see, no one knew how to build because God gave him all the codes and the fashion and the instruction. Solomon was a builder. When God said, Solomon, build my temple, the word of God tells me that he gives Solomon codes. He gives Solomon instruction. He told Solomon what he wanted because God is a master builder. When Joshua had to go into Jericho, God gave Joshua specific instructions how to break down and how to build up because all through the history of mankind, God is a master builder. So he comes through his life of his son and he says in Matthew, how are you building? Are you building on the rock? Oh, are you building on the sand because I've tested it I've tasted it and I have seen that if you build on the sand when the storms come when the floods come when COVID come when pandemic come when shutdown come what are you about to do but if you build on the rock somebody my God COVID could come shutdown could come pandemic could come we are still under an ifata heaven an open heaven he is still making ways He's still giving us rivers in deserts and fountains in dry places. Mm. Jesus builds. And this morning, I want you to also know, for those of you who are beauty, viewing, Satan also builds. While Jesus builds, Satan is building. Don't fear for a moment. Don't think for a moment that Satan is not also an imitator of what he came from. My God, he is trying to build a fallen kingdom. The Bible tells us, and he was kicked out with a third of heaven that is trying to rebuild heaven on earth. But I come by to tell you, he may imitate Jesus but he could never build a rock because the rock has been tested from season to season from time to time and Jesus is the firm foundation on which we stand ah my God I know about the imitator Satan he tried to trick me in life he tried to make me believe that this is what God had for me my God he's an imitator he knows how to put trouble in your way he knows how to paint pitya he's a canvas painter he knows how to paint 
ain't illusion. He's a phantom builder. He know how to sell you lies and make you build your house on sand. Make you believe that the grass is greener on the other side. Make you throw away your dreams. Throw away your vision. Throw away your prayer. Throw away your life. But I come by to tell somebody today, how are you building? Death is coming for all of us. Maybe not today, but it might come tomorrow. It might come next month. It might come next year. How are you building? Everything that God builds, he tests. Not because you are being tested means that God is not building. Oh, I got to drop this one in there because some folks believe that when God is building, testing doesn't come. But everything that God builds, he tests. You see, a good masonry, a good contractor, a good carpenter knows that when he builds something, he must be able to go back and test it. I've seen my father-in-law, when I began to put this sermon together, I said, God, the best person to put it together is the man, the builder himself. So today I'm taking a cup from you, pastor. I'm going to try to preach like a construction builder. Amen. And the good thing, I've seen him build benches and build different things you must put your weight on it my God some of us God is trying to put his weight on us my God he's not breaking you he's not destroying you he's just testing it to see if what he built is going to outlast the storms ahead to see if what he built is going to outlast the flood ahead because he knows it is coming ah uh, my God note what the scripture said the flood the rain and the wind did not only come for those who built on the sand it came for those who built on the rock and those who built on the sand. We are not exempted from storms. I know you're saved for a very long time, but you are not exempted from storms. You are not exempted from floods. You are not exempted from wind and rain. It's going to come, but what will matter is what foundation you built on. If you're built on the rock, if you're built on the word, if you're built on prayer, if you're built on forgiveness, if you're built on his spirit, when they arise my God it should destroy you but you will outlive that storm you will outlive that rain you will outlive that flood I know I'm talking to the converted I know I'm talking to somebody who know what it is to be in the flood who know what it is to be in the mud and come back out and say God you tested you tasted and you see and now I can say that the Lord is good Mm. Watching someone build doesn't mean you're building right. Oh, I began to write. And the Holy Spirit said, Joe, you could watch somebody build. That doesn't mean you have the right building codes. That doesn't mean you're building right. We have a lot of folks who are imitating. They are not building right, but they are watching others build right. Working with someone who builds doesn't guarantee you are building right. You've got to have a relationship with God. you got to have a personal connection with God to build right. Years of experiencing uh, having experience as a laborer doesn't mean it validates you in also building right. You see, I could be a laborer on the field and still build wrong because I never learned the basic necessities of how to build the foundation up. You see, working along a great constructor doesn't mean that I am a builder, doesn't mean I'm building right. So God said to me, tell my people, my God, you going to church doesn't mean you're building right. You prophesying doesn't mean you're building right. You speaking in tongues doesn't mean you're building right. You in the front row choir doesn't mean you're building right. You in the dancing team doesn't mean you're building right. Do you have a personal relationship with God when everything fades away? When the storm come, the flood come, the wind come, would God find you standing? Because one thing I can assure you of, more is ahead of us. Trials are ahead of us. Perilous is ahead of us. My God, it's ahead of us. And we've got to get it right. If not, now when? 
You see, according to the word of God, it takes divine pattern and structure to build right in the kingdom of God. As we build, we have to understand we first need Jesus. Psalms 127 tells me, unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. You see what COVID did? It unshaked, it shaked us. It showed us how many of us were building in vain. We were building monuments, putting up statues, celebrating celebrity lifestyle, personalities that didn't match the, the, the spirit of God, counterfeit spirits. My God and God came with COVID and he ransacked the body of Christ. He ransacked the church. He uncovered sores and bubbles and rottenness and he said fix it. How are you building? I thank God for the pandemic. I thank God for the pandemic because it caused me to ask myself how am I building? Some of us are building for the television. Some of us are building for fame. Some of us are building for followers. Some of us are building for subscribers. Some of us are building for new friends on Facebook. But I want to tell you something. If you're not building for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, you build in vain. 1 Corinthians 3.10 tells me, according to the grace of God which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereof. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. Jesus has set the foundation for us. But do you know we can corrupt good things? My God, he has left a blueprint. He has left the mark. He has left the foundation. But so many false doctrine, so many many lies, so many scattered words and prophecies that have caused us to stray as the body of Christ, that today, my God, even though a good foundation was built, uh, so many things have come to corrupt it, so many are building images out of it, but I've come by to reprimand those of you who are listening, let us build on the rock again, let us build on the name of Jesus, he said at the mention of that name, every knee shall bow, every tongue must come confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and no God is building somebody in this place you see Abraham built according to pattern Abraham built according to instruction he said take your son up to Moriah you see that was a building pattern to get Abraham to a place of obedience my God God's building codes don't look like man building codes God's instructions never looks like the world's instructions God's building pattern is always never the normal it's always never the favorite it's always never the most like that's why when God set you apart if you look at anyone who's building on the rock they are not favorable they are not liked by many they are always hated by the crowd because when you begin to build according to the pattern and structure of God my God the crowd will not say yes but they will say away with Jesus give us Barabbas but I come by to tell you let us come back to our foundation let us get back to the rock uh, the rock of Javalta the rock that never breaks uh, he can go through the fire like Shadrach Meshach and Abednego my he don't break he don't quench he don't destroy but he comes in in the fire and he is deliverer he is Yeshua he is the great I am that I am he doesn't break under pressure he doesn't break in the lion's den but he shuts up the mouth of lions who am I talking about? The rock called Jesus Christ. He said, if you build on this rock, Peter, I will build my church unmovable. My God, unshakable. My God, unstoppable. That's the rock this morning that God is reminding this family. My God, I've chosen to give unto you your birthright. Don't sell it for no lentil peas. Don't give it up like Esau. This is your foundation. This is your rock. Build on it and it will outlast your storms. You see, the rain is my trouble. The rain is my storm. The rain is my issue. The rain is my world system. The rain is my policies. The rain is agendas. The rain is debts. The rain is sickness. The rain is financial hardship. The rain is relationships. The rain is unforeseen tragedies. But God says, if you would build on the rock, unforeseen tragedies will come, but you will outlive them all. Sickness will come 
come, but you will outlive them all. Financial hardship will come, but you will outlive them all. Build on the rock. Build on the rock. The question to the viewers today, how are you building? COVID came and it showed the world how we were building. It showed governments, prime ministers, economies, my God, presidents, how they were building. My God, it sent the world in chaos. It sent the world in an uproar because financial books were now pulled when we now realized we were wasting money. We now realized we didn't have this for this and we didn't have a plan for this. My God, when trouble comes, it reveals your foundation. When trouble comes, it shifts the covering, the toppling, the tent and it reveals the foundation. How are you building? Because trouble is coming. If we are building on the rock, we are building on firm foundation. Mm. If we are building on the rock, we are building on Christ, the solid rock. If we are building on the rock, we are building on his word. Not man's word, God's word. If we are building on the rock, ah, we are building on prayer. Not man's prayer, God's prayer. If we are building on the rock, we are building on the spirit of God. Not man's spirit, God's spirit. If we are building on the rock, we are building on instructions of the Lord. Not man's instruction, God's instruction. What are you building on? I tell you, God has risen up an army in the end time. A remnant that will be called by his name a Joel generation a Joshua generation a generation that will be fierce uh, skip through windows and scale up walls a generation that will not hold back a generation that will be fearless in the midst of crisis where would you be would you be building on sand or would you be building on the rock because trouble is coming. Our dear brother Calvin has gone home. He has gone home and left us behind. We do not weep for him because it is we he weeps for. We who are still in the land of the living. We who must face trouble. We who must face the rain. We who must face agendas. We who must face policies. Oh, he's in a good place this morning. He is celebrating with the angels. And while we weep here, let us weep for our own souls. The, uh, the old folks had a hymn they used to sing. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. I tell you something, uh, believers and unbelievers, whoever you are in this audience, I, I want to remind you that no man knows the hour, no man knows the time. Today might be our dear brother, tomorrow might be yours. We sing the song too late, too late shall be the cry. Sometimes we are waiting on our deathbed, we are waiting on that appointed time to say God forgive me, here I am but I thank God that brother Calvin said all his goodbyes ahead of him. He called his son he spoke to his next son he said listen to me I love you you see this is what we ought to do because we don't know the day nor the hour some of us are waiting because God already knew that hour that come he wasn't able to speak he wasn't able to talk but I thank God he did the talking ahead of him sometimes we are hoping we'll be able to talk at that hour but you don't know your condition you're gonna go in you may not be able to whisper a word come on tell people people you love them tell people you forgive them tell people you need them tell people listen to me I love you in spite of we need to be good to each other in spite of what are you building on I look to close we are not exempted believers children of God we are not exempted we have our same fair chances of trials both of them we we face the rain we face the storm we will face the flood we will face the pressures we will face the fires we will face the loneliness we will face the depressions we will face the tiredness we will face them all but one thing only one will walk out the one who built on the rock 
this morning. I want to leave you with an everlasting message. If it's the last thing God permits me to do, is to remind you how are you building. We are in the 21st century. What a dream it was 10 years ago. What a dream it was under the decease of our last prime minister, uh, the honorable Mr. Manning. My God, we would hear the word 2020 vision and we would laugh. My God, how far was that? Today we are in the 20th century. We are in 20 2021 and 2030 is already being planned for my God what you cannot see today doesn't mean it's far away my God you do not know the hour you do not know the time because time is not in the hands of man time is in the hands of God let us put away our politics let us put away our antics let us put away our unforgiveness let us put away our bitterness and our pride and everything that separates us my God and pollutes us and let us ask ourselves how are we building this was my lasting question and as I sat there and I heard the Holy Spirit say to me Joe how are you building I began to examine my foundation I began to examine my foundation and as I began to examine I get to realize that there are some tricks and there are some plots of the enemy to get you to build on sand while you think you build on rock. Wow, 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 wow. You see, there is a type of sand that looks as if you're building on rock. Satan is a good imitator. He makes you feel you are scaling mountains when you are deep in valleys. My God, he's a good imitator this morning. It is important that you test the rock you are on. It is important that you put it in the fire. It is important that you try it by the hand. It is important that you try the rock. He said, test me and see. Prove me and see. And see if I will not open up the windows of heaven. God is a God that welcomed the testing. He welcomed the testing of the rock because he's a God that tests everything he builds I leave you with this last interpretation of the word he gave me he said to me he said Joe if I build it will never break but he said everything you build will break oh somebody didn't get that you see we get so accustomed building things with our hands we get so accustomed building things with our identity we get so accustomed building things with our prophecy we get so accustomed building things with what we know and how we know but there is a time when God will test that foundation and see if it really was built upon the rock I came to realize that anything I built with my hands it has a 99% possibility to be broken you didn't hear me you didn't hear me you see if I build my house this morning there is a 99% chance that a hurricane would come and that same house that I built with my hands would be gone by the morning it doesn't matter how much I prayed for it sweat for it sacrificed for it cried for it my God if it is built by my hands there is a 99% chance it would be broken and that's the thing we miss today while we're in the land of the living we believe that the things we built are eternal but I've come by to tell you they are temporal they are bound to must to have to be broken but he says he said to me Joe the things I built the things I took my time and built in you. The things I took my time and I spoken in you. The things I raised up in you. Those things could never be broken. My God, the things you added. You know, we like to have additives, salt and pepper and ketchup and mustard. You say all those things you added, all those flavors are unnecessary. I can break them all. All the titles, all the names, all the, all, all the statuses. He said those things I could break. But he said the things I bear, my word, my my word my word he said those things will never break <laughs> he said I'll never break those things because when I build I don't build with mistake 
You see, remember when we started, we talked about him being the master builder. His profession is to build. When God builds, he doesn't make mistakes in building. My God, when Adam and Eve messed up, he didn't stop building. Immediately, he had another building plan because that's what architects do. There are always another building plan that they can go back to the blueprint and spring off from. My God, he goes back to the blueprint and he says, Adam, you fail. If you fail, but my God, I see along the bloodline, there is another one I can spring off from the blueprint. Uh, who am I going to look for? The word of God tells us that then they bore for a son called Seth. And out of that lineage, God got Noah. He said, who can I look for? My God, I'm about to destroy the earth again because the blueprint looks like it failed again. But I'm going to spring out the next one because I'm a master builder. And the Bible says, and Noah was found. Uh, and Noah, my my God and his family was the next springboard of the architectural drawing of mankind. And they came and they restarted the earth again. And now know what time is gone. And he looks through the lineage of man again. And he said, who can I springboard? Uh, another building from? Uh, who can I springboard? The saving grace of mankind. And he looks through the lineage of Jesse. And he sees David. He sees Mary. He sees Jesus. And he said, I'm going to springboard a blueprint one and for all. After this blueprint, higher than the chief priest of Melchizedek, this one, after this one, my God, there'll be no other high priest needed. There'll be no other blueprint needed. There'll be no other architect needed. On this rock, I build my... On this rock, I build my... And the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of Jesus Christ this morning how are you building are you building on sand or are you building on the rock are we building on eternal or are we building on temporal because this too shall pass I've chosen to build on the rock I, I, I want to pass my exam you see we, sometimes we forget we are in the examination room and I want to pass that exam oh my God if I don't get an A that's okay I just need to pass that exam I just need to get over to the other side when my role is called up when my name is called on that role I just need to get to where I need to go uh, in the arms of my comforter I don't want to be called for and I'm absent on the role list I want to be present when he calls my name because he would come and he would call because the Bible tells us he came and he did a roll call after Adam and Eve fell. Adam, where at the roll call is being made in the middle day of the noontime. Adam, are you present or are you absent? Adam said, here I am, God. I don't know if I'm absent or I'm present, but something untimely happened to me. Don't worry, you're here at the master builder's feet. I have a plan for mankind that even if the Adam first fail, my God, there is another Adam that's going to come. And after that second Adam, we are going to face eternity. This morning, we have no excuse. Those of you who are viewing, you have no excuse. I want to leave you with the saving grace of God. We have no excuse if we should die today because you have heard this message one that calls unto repentance one that calls unto the tugging of your heart that if you would turn around he would hear if you would repent if you would ask God to come in your heart he would we have no excuse this morning that if you should die after this very hour you are without excuse he said to them that hear the gospel, to them that hear the good news, you will be without excuse because the kingdom of God has come near you. Today the kingdom of God has come now your dwelling. Receive him today as your Lord and Savior. If you are here in this room and you haven't given your life to Jesus, I want to introduce you to the master builder, Jesus himself. He said if you build on me, you are sure that you are building on good foundation. And so it is today. How are you building? 
receive him as your Lord and Savior. If you have served him before, you know him, you gave your life to him. And at some point you slipped up. At some point you look back. I want to encourage you to reconcile this morning. Give your life back to him. Recommit your spirit, your soul, your body back to him. He is a faithful father from generation to generation. Pastor D, can you sing that song for me? Okay. Can you sing that song for me? Or could we stand and let's sing that song on Christ, the solid rock? Hallelujah. Christ the solid rock I stand all on the ground is sinking sand all of the ground is sinking sand oh yes, my hope is built my hope is built on Christ is blessed and Jesus blood Righteousness, again I trust his sweetest name, but only lean on Jesus' name, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all on the ground with sinking sun, all on the ground. God has given us the grace to stand in the most cloudless and perilous situation. He stands out as the rock of ages that stand all the tests of time. We don't need to hold on to a straw, but we need to hold on to the solid rock that unveiled himself for us. He has given each and every one of us the grace and that strength and that courage to stand. That is why he has said, when he have done everything, stand. Because he knew that condition will come, that it will seem impossible to stand. And as a loving father, he stand to lift us up. It don't matter where we may be standing right now. It may seem perplexed. It may seem discouraging. But God is saying to you, I am your comforter. I am standing with you. He said to his disciples, I will never leave you nor forsake you, but I will be with you always. We want to pray for the family. Yeah, some of the family, all of the family is not able to be here. Some, amen, is, is viewing on, online, and there is no distance in prayer. Amen. I want to let you know that Jesus knows your pain. He knows your hurt. Listen, and he's a very present help in the time of trouble. How many of you are experiencing trouble? And you're experiencing need. I'm introducing to you the comforter. He want to be a comforter. He want to comfort you and to love you. He want to call you son. He want to call you daughter. I want you to feel his arms of embracement around you. Listen, there is no other greater love but for our father to put his hands around you. And say, I love you, son, and I love you, daughter. This is what Daddy Jesus is doing right now. No greater love no man had, but for a good man laid down his life for his friend. He loved you this morning. You are looking on, and you are saying, Daddy, I'm going to miss you. But listen, you're going to see him on the other side of the shore. Hallelujah. Father, we bless your name. You are here in this congregation. 
you have a connection. That connection is not going to be broken. It's just temporary shaken. Amen. But you're going to meet in that sweet by and by. You're going to meet on the other side. And with this word, comfort yourself to be encouraged, be strengthened for God's still a good God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we declare your grace upon this family, dear God. It is your pleasure, Lord God, to call, O oh God, from time to eternity. And when you call, no man can say no. When you say yes, no devil can say no. And when you say no, no devil can say yes, Lord. But we thank you, Lord God, for you have the book in heaven. You have that rule book in heaven. Lord God, and you are able to call names, oh God. And so, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that you have said to the disciples, rejoice not that the demons are subjected unto you. Yet you said, rejoice because your name is written in the Lamb book of life. And so, Lord, just give us hope, dear God, to know, Lord God, that you, Lord God, that you have redeemed us from destruction and you have delivered us from all the powers of evil. And we declare this morning life to those, oh God, that feel like dying this morning. We declare life, Lord, and peace and joy through the power of the Holy Ghost. We declare, oh God, your quickening power to rest upon your people, oh God. Rest upon the family this morning. Rest upon those that are viewing, Lord. Take, oh God, for your grace, Lord, have lifting power. You are able to lift, oh God, and set them on strong foundation. For your word is a firm foundation to build upon. And so, Lord God, if we have to rise in faith, the only true foundation that we have is the word of God and so you have encouraged us Lord this morning to build our hope and to build our confidence upon the word of God so I pray in the name of Jesus Lord God that they be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might Lord that they will build oh God strong hope that the passing oh God of Calvin Henry will bring the dead oh God alive to bring Lord those that are hopeless into the purifying hope oh God and they will not see oh God fear because you have not given us a spirit of fear but you have given us power of love and soundness of mind I pray Lord God that men and women go to renew in your mind Lord God that they will prove what is that good and acceptable Lord God that they will serve in the spirit and in the truth for you have called us to a better life you have call us to a better way strengthen them oh God along this pilgrim pathway give them oh God strength to stand in this condition for you are Jehovah Jireh our provider provide oh God when there is need oh God take them to another level take them to a new dimension Lord for they are above and not beneath because of your greatness we have you have treasure in earthen vessels Wash and fill their God. Wash and fill their God. That they will be in the overflowing. Let them overflow with joy. Let them overflow with peace. The peace that passes to all understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. And so we come against every unform, every familiar spirit. Lord God, some of them might see vision that he come back in the dream. They may say, well, he, he visited me last night and he talked to me. Father, in the name of, name of Jesus, we come against every unfamiliar, every familiar spirit. We set fire to them now in the name of Jesus. For you said that the dead is already dead and there is no remembrance in their grave. Any coming back now is familiar spirit. And we shut the doors. We take no. So Satan shall not be ministering through the dead. Oh God, but you, oh God, has given us your word. So we stand on the integrity of your on, on the integrity of your word. And so we stand firm on solid foundation in Jesus' mighty name. Bless them and strengthen them and keep them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And so is my desire to say the grace, the, the, the doxology. Amen. As we prepare, amen, to go on to the 
other level, which is at the cemetery, where we'll be able to lay his body down. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise. Praise God from whom all blessing flow. Praise him, all creature here below. Praise him, all hearts of gently hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And um, we'll be making our way to the Bacalot Cemetery. All right? Where we have the final rites. At this time, if the family will have their final viewing, you can do so at this time. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for coming.